welcome everybody happy thursday morning or afternoon wherever you are dialing in from on this lovely thursday we are super excited to be hosting our very last power hour of 2021 with our partners at vendo today these experts are going to be sharing the top ways to crush it on amazon in q1 we are wrapping up a very very crazy year so we're super excited to look ahead to 2022 um, we'll give everybody just a minute to come on in before we dive into the content, but in the meantime, I'd love to pass it over to Darren, who's the CEO of Vendo, to tell you a little bit more about what we'll be talking about and then introduce you to each of our panelists. Darren, I'll Thank let you take it from here. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, we're all excited, super excited to be here, and as my son Elijah says, happy thrilling Thursday. Um, excited to dive in today on a very relevant topic for a lot of, hopefully, the audience. Uh, which is top ways to crush it on Amazon in Q1. I uh, hope everyone had a great Q4 on the platform. We're excited now to talk about what's next. And uh, for that, I want to introduce some of our superstars on our team. We'll start uh, with Mr. Vinny Alvarez. Why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll go to Nick and Geffen. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for Power Hour. Uh, really excited to be here. Um, I am the Director of Account Strategist at Vendo. We manage a large book of business across different categories. Um, today, we'll dive in and give you definitely some, some tidbits and value in terms of how to be prepared come Q1. In fact, be sure to be prepared the way I see it. <laughs> but we'll walk you through that um, and exactly what it means as a brand owner, how we can help accelerate growth. If you're just planning on launching, we can definitely provide value as well in terms of you know, certain strategies that could be really quick to set up and just get going. Awesome, thanks Vinny. Nick? Yeah, um, thanks everyone. Super uh, excited to be here, um, to be here uh, with Power Hour and FounderMade. Um, I'm Nicholas Martinez, the Vice President of Marketing here at Vendo. And uh, as Darren mentioned, we're gonna be talking about different ways to crush it in Q1. Um, and you know, just to give you a little um, color into kind of how we view marketing here at Vendo. Um, we basically look at, you know, marketing for Amazon and Walmart um, as, as being as extensive as possible, right? We believe the digital marketing world is our oyster and that um, that means not stopping at the gates of Amazon or the gates of Walmart, but instead thinking outside of the box and treating your Amazon and Walmart business in a similar way that you would treat your D2C business, while still, of course, leveraging our deep understandings of the Amazon algorithm, the Walmart algorithm, and the different things that makes make Amazon and Walmart happy, right? So, you know, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different marketing strategies that should be really relevant for Q1, but here at Vendo, you know, we, 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 we do it all pretty much from A to Z, whether it's, you know, uh, leveraging Amazon's beta programs, Amazon's, you know, marketing features, um, you know, PR campaigns, influencer marketing, affiliate, live streaming, social media, email marketing, lead generation, direct mail marketing, right? Yeah, snail mail. We do that for, uh, for Amazon and Walmart too. So a lot of cool, innovative initiatives, and uh, we look forward to digging into some of those. Thanks, Nick. Geffen. Thank you, Nick. So nice to virtually meet everyone. My name is Geffen Laredo. I'm the advertising manager here at Vendo. Um, and, you know, as Vinny said, we, we manage a really large book of business across multiple categories. Um, and we get a lot of really strong insights and really uh, valuable, action, valuable action items um, that we can leverage on the platform. And as Nick mentioned, there's a whole world of marketing out there. And one thing we do at Vendo is we like to, you know, even though they work in tandem, we separate advertising and marketing, right? And so the media buying aspect of Amazon and in today's highly, highly competitive world on the platform um, is crucial for success. So we all know Amazon is pay to play in one way or another. Um, Amazon PPC is a big portion of that. And so uh, very excited to dive into some of the strategies and uh, expectations that we've employed both this year and what we're looking forward to in Q1 of next year. Thanks, Geffen. All right, well, just for context, uh, Vendo is uh, one of the top performance marketing agencies and we are focused heavily on Amazon and walmart.com. This conversation will be specific to Amazon, but we have an entire team of superstars that dedicate themselves to both two of the largest marketplaces, um, but excited to share insights specifically on Amazon today. With that, uh, we're gonna start out the conversation with Vinny and talking about site merchandising, optimization, ranking. Uh, I know Vinny, you're heavily involved on our team on that. 
Vinny also obsesses over ranking in the best way possible, uh, as everybody should be, quite frankly, as Vinny's about to tell you. So Vinny, why don't you share some uh, little nuggets for our audience about best practices for Amazon site merchandising optimization and ranking? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Darren. Uh, so this is obviously ahead of Q1. Um, what I like, how I like to look at how we prepare internally at Bando with their brands, and as you should also be looking at this if you're a brand owner, is pretty much plan, prep, execute, and optimize. Right? You're definitely creating your own flywheel. Um, and with that, you're you're looking at a 365 degree strategy fuel with marketing. Uh, Nick is definitely going to cover that, and with advertising. So those are two elements that are going to support your growth as you head into quarter one. Now, when I talk about um, optimizing and covering your baseline, it's 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 in support of ranking, right? So what I mean by that is make sure you have your infographics ready, your titles and bullets supported by SEO, your A plus. Even now, what we're doing as best practice internally is having seasonal uh, brand stores. We know that from a merchandising perspective, uh, the narrative that we're driving on our uh, brand stores is very important so that we're relevant to the consumer looking for our products, right? So within that relevancy, obviously we're targeting keywords that are gonna support our growth, that we're trying to elevate to page one and increase in ranking. So, if you're able to cover that baseline, that fundamental baseline, you're ahead of your, all your competitors and in categories. So um, in addition to that, let me lean a little bit more on targeted keywords. So we know that, alg we know that Amazon is an algorithmic um, search engine, right? So you got to understand what keywords you're targeting. Search demand, there's different softwares out there that give you a good search demand. Um, understanding of whether certain keywords are relevant during season or not. So leverage those tools. Amazon themselves have actually just within the past months released more um, keyword um, information on the back end for sellers like yourself and brand owners like yourself. So be able to leverage those tools to fully understand how you, you want to rank within certain keywords. And if you're a mature brand and you're looking for year over year growth, uh, that baseline includes looking at how you did compared to last year, look at what products really drove revenue. Um, and start really pushing those items from an inventory level to ensure that you can have um, even a greater growth compared to last year. So we know that supply chain right now is an issue and we completely understand that, but work within your constraints um, and start prepping ahead and, and, and fully execute. Yeah, and, and to capitalize on that, Vinny, just for our audience, uh, some of the software programs that people may or may not be familiar with, like Helium 10, Jungle Scout, Keepa, um, but what you were saying was spot on is a lot of people don't realize Amazon is constantly updating their internal brand analytics platform and the product opportunity explorer tool that they recently released what that was a couple months ago. People didn't even realize that was on the platform and that gave you specific data directly from Amazon as to what niche bunch of keywords and categories you should be looking at for either opportunities to expand your product line or where you're ranking and how to grow your existing product line. So uh, great call outs there for sure. Let's talk a little bit about advertising. Um, Gavin, there's a lot going on right now with rising CPC costs on Amazon. We've yep. seen that uh, tremendously over the last even 30 days, never mind the last couple of months. Uh, what's your take on the trends in Q1? How will that play out? Um, how do we see CPC and controlling that moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for one, it's going to go up. <laughs> there's really no, there's, you know, looking at the, at, at the trends, looking at the year over year growth in CPC with the sheer number of sellers coming onto Amazon, it's, you know, it's basic supply and demand, right? We haven't seen major increases in advertising inventory that Amazon has given. So if you think about a Facebook, right, think about when you go onto your timeline on a desktop, how many advertising placements there are. And if you can go back, I know it's, it's basically second nature for us at this point, but to think about how few advertising spots have been added on the home page or on the main search page of an Amazon search term, if there's more sellers, then the price is going to go up. So the biggest challenge is how do you ensure that you're getting the most value out of your ads, right? It's not even necessarily the lowest cost per click, but it's the most value. And that comes from looking at the right KPIs. So looking at how many new customers you're driving to your brand and what those costs, maybe, maybe tracking customer lifetime value and seeing if the investment in certain keywords has been worth it. 
um, one thing one thing Vinny mentioned and Darren mentioned is that is the tools that are available on Amazon and off of Amazon um, to find new keywords, niche spaces to go into that might be lower cost per click or might have higher conversion rates and might be more relevant for your brand to eventually get to the top of page one. Um, and so what we look at from Q4 is we saw huge increases in cost per click. I'm sure some of you guys saw, but Amazon had recommended um, anywhere between two to 300% increases in bids for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And we saw for top of page, we saw those numbers actually come to, um, come to uh, fruition. For most of our brands, advertising on top of page saw about a 200% increase in cost per click. Um, and for certain categories, that's gonna continue into Q1, right? That's gonna be those new year, new you categories that are gonna see high demand. Um, things like supplements, things like protein, things like beauty, um, those, those are going to see some strong increases. So I think the trend is in one direction. I think that it's going to go up um, and leveraging the aforementioned tools uh, to find more value is going to be crucial and something that we've been pioneering, which I know that Nick will dive into a little bit later on. But, and I know that if, if for uh, those of you that follow the space closely, you've heard a lot about this, but leveraging external advertising, right? That's going to be something that's massive. I know Darren's nodding his head because it's something we talk about basically every day, and we and we really do want to be at the forefront of those strategies. Um, but bringing in qualified, you know, full funnel or moving through the funnel traffic to your Amazon listing that has multiple uh, effects. A, it is qualified traffic that might convert. B, Amazon does value external traffic at higher rates than internal traffic which means that the halo impact on ranking could be greater than just that, than, than um, advertising on uh, Amazon alone. And so having, you know, full-fledged funnels and multiple strategies that are constantly being tested off of the platform can allow you to bring down those costs per click. And more importantly, what it's all about, bring down those costs per customer acquisition and drive more customers into your funnel that end up either subscribing or end up becoming lifetime customers on the platform. Thanks, Kevin. Con continue to test, execute, and iterate uh, is very important when running your CPC campaigns, for sure. Uh, that, that transitions nicely into the next converse, uh, topic here. Nick, let's talk about probably what most of our audience is uh, interested in and very it's a very relevant question that we get a lot, which is most D2C brands actually shy away from launching on Amazon for the most basic reason, they feel they can't own the customer relationship, right? And I think we've developed different ways of how we can leverage Amazon as much of that marketing or customer acquisition channel that people don't realize is plentiful in nature to take advantage of. So we'd love for you to dive in and give some actionable tips and nuggets to our audience about, hey, how can you actually own the customer relationship on Amazon? No, cer certainly, and 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 like you said, Darren, you know this is this is one of the biggest concerns we have with the when brands are thinking about going on to Amazon, and you know we definitely bring a, an omni-channel approach. Um, you know, having history in brick and mortar retail as well. Um, so so there's a lot of different things you can do, but I think just to to boil it down into the most simplest form, um, you know, you've got to you've got to get that customer contact information either pre-purchase or post-purchase, right? Because you're not going to you're not going to get it from Amazon, right? They're not going to give you your customers' emails. Um, so pre-purchase, post-purchase. So let's talk about pre-purchase first. And this really goes into what Geffen was just um, getting into about external traffic drivers, external funnels. And by external, we mean off Amazon uh, traffic drivers. So whether it's Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, email marketing, influencer marketing, social media, it doesn't matter. Whenever you're driving somebody to Amazon pre-purchase, that is an opportunity to gather data, right? To gather contact information that you can then leverage later on for remarketing. Now, let's say that that person purchases. Well, now you have their contact information. You can put them into your email list. You can communicate with them freely off Amazon without the restrictions of Amazon. You can do remarketing campaigns, new product launch uh, emails, um, you know, whatever it may be, promoting a sale. You can now do all of that, right? On Amazon, they don't allow you to remarket really. There's a couple betas that we'll get into probably later, but you can't really talk to your customer on Amazon unless it's asking for an honest review or helping them out with a return and refund. 
So getting that email, regardless of where that person is coming from pre-purchase is super, super crucial. And if you're doing SMS marketing already, or you wanna consider SMS marketing, gathering that phone number is something as well. You can put them into your SMS marketing list. And um, I do think that SMS marketing in 2022 is only gonna get bigger and more effective um, as long as you're of course cautious with how you use it. So pre-purchase, um, long story short, get that email. Now, how do you get that email? Well, a landing page, right? Um, you could set up a landing page in between that traffic driver and Amazon. You know, if you're offering a discount on Amazon, well, you got to give me your email or your phone number before I, I'll give you that discount. You could set it up in that way. Uh, we do a lot with ManyChat flows. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with ManyChat, um, it's like a, a, a bot for Facebook Messenger. And so we'll run ads, drive the person to that ManyChat Messenger flow. And during that flow, we'll make sure to get that contact information before sending them off to, to Amazon. Um, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, we've been experimenting with um, gamified lead generation. So running um, social media giveaways um, or gamified giveaways that then gather that contact information as part of the requirement to be eligible for the giveaway. So you can do some of those lead gen type activities. Um, there's a tool out there called Chat Blender that works uh, really well for gamified Instagram giveaways. It actually, actually ties into um, the API of Instagram. There's also Viper, um, which is a uh, desktop kind of landing page uh, gamified giveaway tool. So th these are all things that I think are gonna be more and more relevant um, in, the, in, in the new year and are gonna be crucial for, for that lead generation and, and owning that customer relationship. Um, now we talked about pre-purchase, some of the pre-purchase tactics. What about post-purchase? Let's say you didn't get, get that person's contact information before they bought, right? They, they purchased organically or they purchased through an Amazon ad. And now you've got that customer, but you're like, darn, I wish I could like communicate freely with them. Um, well, there's certain things you can do to, to drive that, that uh, contact information. One way is through product insert cards. Um, pretty straightforward. You know, most people probably understand the traditional uses of product insert cards. Um, you know, telling a brand story, opening up a communication channel for customer service, requesting reviews, all that fun stuff. Um, but the main, the main point here is use that product insert card to incentivize some type of, uh, to incentivize that person to opt into your email list, right? So 10% off your next purchase, 20% off your next purchase, whatever it may be. And then in order for that person to get that discount code, they've got to opt into your email list. And that is all clearly stated on that product insert card. Um, you could also um, then use that email and follow up um, and ask for a review, right? So you can take it a step further, ask for a review, provide customer service, but basically get that customer into your, your customer database um, using that post-purchase insert card. Um, you can also put QR codes on that insert card to make it a little bit easier. QR codes are becoming more and more um, well well used, um, you know, with COVID. So we're we're getting back to QR codes, and I think that those are only going to get bigger in 2022 as well. Um, another post purchase tactic um, is direct mail marketing. Now I know I alluded to this earlier. Um, you know, full transparency, direct mail marketing um, requires you to have the customer's address, right? And Amazon doesn't want you to have that customer's address. So you gotta be careful um, with, this, with this type of marketing tactic, um, but some brands have used it and, and it has been effective. Um, and we can, we can definitely share um, uh, uh, later on, you know, what tool you use to get the customer's addresses, but basically you can set up a direct mail marketing campaign, um, retargeting your customers post-purchase, similar to how I described the insert, but using a postcard. You can use that um, direct mail uh, marketing to, to drive repeat purchases, to drive subscription purchases, right? Maybe you wanna target your repeat purchasers um, and, and, and incentivize them to sign up for recurring delivery. You can do it that way. Um, and you can just use it to get them to opt into your email list. You can also get it, uh, use it to get them to follow you on Amazon, right? We'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but followers on Amazon are getting more and more important. And so you can drive them to your brand store through a QR code where they are then um, um, told to, to follow, right? And once they follow you, you then unlock all these remarketing abilities. Um, so long story short, pre-purchase, post-purchase, 
figure out a way to get that contact information and you're going to be so much further than most of the competition out there you're going to be able to drive review velocity drive remarketing power and drive positive customer relationships not to mention make your brand image known make make your strong branding relevant so those customers think oh i just bought from this brand i didn't just buy from amazon uh so a lot there nick uh, we are getting some questions from our audience as you're talking there I'm hopefully don't butcher the name, but Niso, uh, Niso, hopefully I said your name correctly. He posted a very uh, interesting question yeah. here talking on the topic about having, you know, he said, so we totally. have our own brand website. Why should I promote traffic to Amazon and not my own website? There's a big chance they will be introduced to a different brand. The customer's Amazon's not mine. Uh, obviously all of us can chime in here a little bit, but um, Nick, for you specifically, I guess brand stores would be one of the most immediate answers as to how to isolate the traffic um you know and then obviously there's different urls things like that but do you want to uh, address that yeah no just a I, I, great question we get that a lot um and you know it's not always a, a perfect clean cut answer for every brand but i would say this one if you're worried about profitability and margin uh, on amazon versus d2c well amazon's brand referral bonus program that was released recently gets you 10 percent back on any externally driven traffic so if you're driving that traffic to, to amazon your referral fee is essentially going to be five percent instead of 15 percent. so that actually might even make it more profitable on amazon uh if you're if, if your shipping costs um are, are even cheaper on amazon so that that's one reason to drive there but to answer your question about you know, being introduced to a different brand, um, definitely a, a fair um, risk, right? Um, and, but as Darren mentioned, driving to the brand store, your, your own brand store is like your own mini website within Amazon. And so it's not like they have all these other products on the shelf to look at, like the Amazon search results. Rather, they are just presented with your products, your brand story, and they are directed to go there. If you give them a discount code in order to drive them to there, in order to, to compel them, well, they now have an incentive to purchase from your brand and, and, and not the other brand, right? And then if you aren't driving to the brand store, maybe this is more bottom of funnel and you wanna just drive straight to the product page. Well, that's gonna be what you know, you'll wanna do. Drive straight to the product page. Um, don't drive to you know, search results or anything like that, of course. Now there's still the opportunity for other ads to show up on that product page. Definitely, definitely a fair risk there that you know you can't really offset. But I think as long as you're making a compelling um, incentive and you're and you're driving in that brand story, and this person is more top of funnel, or they can be brought down the funnel by driving them to the brand store, the likeliness to convert uh, on your products is is going to be very high. Um, so I would just say test it and um, and and see what works. Yeah, yeah. Nick, I can I can also chime in there for a sec too on ads. Um, you know, this is. This is why branded protection and um, and branded advertising and branded defense is so important. You know, when we talk about bringing people through a funnel, um, we drive them, let's say, off of Amazon onto Amazon. Uh, we want to minimize uh, what what you had brought up, Niso, which is we want to minimize the amount of brands that are showing up when they get to either our branded search term or our product detail page, right? And what that allows us to do is that allows us to A, not only promote our brand, but allows us to upsell and cross promote our various products. So let's say you have product A, uh, customer was interested in product A, and, um, and then comes to our product detail page on Amazon and sees product A, but also product B, C, and D, which are all part of our brand. And so we wanna keep them in there and that can either happen on the brand store, that can happen on the product detail page. And then from a, from a conversion rate perspective, there's a much higher chance that that customer is going to convert on Amazon than off of Amazon. If you look at the average conversion rate on Google ads that go to D to C, it's somewhere in the realm of like 2.5% that actually convert. Uh, on Amazon ads is, uh, can be upwards of 10. And when we look at branded ads, it can be upwards of 20%. So the likelihood that someone will convert on Amazon is significantly higher. So that's where, yes, you might have less of the customer data, but as Nick just mentioned, there are ways to mitigate that, uh, but you have a much higher likelihood of conversion. And so you're still gaining the customer. And in the world of e-commerce, where it's not either Amazon or your website, it's part of the whole pie, there will most likely be a back and forth where that customer will either engage in your website at some point or vice versa, and you'll eventually end up getting that data. Yeah, and, and piggybacking on that last point on it um, is to, to Geffen's point, 
when people are going to Amazon and a lot of D2C brands don't realize this, you are on Amazon whether you like it or not. So if you're doing a huge amount of ad spend to your D2C site, there is tremendous amount of spillover because 40 to 50% of product search journeys start on Amazon. So they're going there first to look for you. They're going to see your competitors if you're not there to meet them. And to Geffen's point, branded defense to make sure you're engaged them. And then lastly, one of the strategy we've seen possibly work well when Nick mentioned testing is if you look at your D2C stats, any abandoned carts or unconverted sales of traffic that you're monitoring on your sites, it's worth it putting those into a campaign and testing them back to Amazon to see if they convert better or if they convert at all. Because again, we know on Amazon conversions are through the roof compared to D2C. So Maybe it's not the initial traffic you're driving to D2C, but maybe your lost traffic or your unconverted traffic, you want to think about retargeting to Amazon as an additional strategy. Um, shifting gears a little bit here, hopefully that was helpful, Niso. Uh, Vinny, let's talk about something that's often overlooked and a very important part of knowing your business, and that's budgeting and forecasting to set yourselves up for success. Why don't you give uh, some tips and best practices there? Yeah, no, I love the conversation. So. Um... Now we're getting signals from external, right? Marketing initiatives, um, testing, A-B testing, see if that traffic converts. We're getting signals from on Amazon. Gaffin is bumping budgets. We're definitely increasing spend there just to drive awareness. But the one thing as brand owners that we have to remember is, is definitely tracking those KPIs because you have to see how you're going to pace against your overall objective. So the biggest recommendation I would say here is develop a forecast for quarter one, at least start with quarter one if, if you're just launching on Amazon. If you're a more mature brand, you're already forecasting the whole entire year um, and obviously capitalizing on trends. So um, for Q1, the one thing I would say is develop a uh, on Amazon advertising budget, of course, track that, track your A-B testing that you're doing, track, track profitability against your P&L. And then for your marketing um, campaigns and you know, different programs that you want to participate, develop a second line item that features those, those campaigns that you actually want to launch with and start tracking ROI on that as well. So it's just important so that when do you start tracking those data points from a daily perspective, for instance, you start capturing and capitalizing on trends, either revenue goes up or down starting Q1, you can then start analyzing what signals are really generating that incremental revenue you're looking for, right? especially while the traffic is on Amazon. you got to convert and you got to convert at a high converting uh, rate. So um, if you're able to see success, back that to a forecast, um, put your actuals, track your actuals and track your actuals, not only on the revenue side, but um, also on your spend side so that you understand what your ROAS are, what your ACOS are, and, and really understand from a profitability standpoint, are you tracking correctly versus your objective? Thank, thanks, Vinny. Another question from Stephanie. Um, Stephanie says, I heard stories of brands that have seen a buyer of their product, resell it on Amazon. What defense strategy do you recommend? Well, first, I recommend you talk to Vendo because we have multiple strategies in-house. That's why everyone's smiling on, on camera here. We actually have, Stephanie, a dedicated team for what we call channel control. And that is a lot of brands, when they started out, they didn't realize Amazon was going to be an important channel to them. So they let their wholesale distributors and unauthorized sellers run wild and start selling on the platform. Uh, fast forward to today, to your point where people can buy at a discount and then resell it themselves. There are ways and methods utilizing both brand registry, your own internal distribution controls to mitigate that uh, as much as possible. Uh, unfortunately, Amazon doesn't offer openly brand gating. We've heard it anecdotally for some brands uh, over the years, but um, there are other ways. Uh, let's say if you're in beauty, as an example, if you're in premium beauty, you're gated um, and other categories have some, some similar application. I don't know, uh, Nick or Vinny or Geffen, if you want to chime in further on just channel control to further answer Stephanie's question. Yeah, I think Amazon has done a really good job maturing on that perspective. Brand registry has been a tool that for brand owners like yourself should leverage. Uh, brand registry throughout, I would say the past couple of months has really matured uh, within their platform. Um, you have the capability of submitting infringements um, and they really consider, especially if your trademark is registered, that's what the tool is meant for. Once you have your registered trademark uh, in the system, um, you pretty much have the confidence of Amazon helping with support any of these cases, right? Counterfeit. Um, anyone that's selling, you know, um, obviously a copycat of your product. 
but yeah, I would say lean on that, go to the platform itself, brandregistry.amazon.com, and definitely learn the ins and outs of what opportunities they have to provide. Yeah, brand, brand registry 1.0 was not very good. <laughs> um, they've certainly iterated drastically on the platform. Another quick, uh, we'll call it pro tip for you, Stephanie, is the word persistence. You'll be surprised how many times you could file the same case to get something done on Amazon. The same applies for channel control. Um, if you're very persistent with some of those filings and some of those reportings or cases, you'll find uh, quite a bit of success. Nick, I see you'd like to chime in there. No, no, definitely. Win winners never quit, right? That's one of our <laughs> mottos. So persistence that. on Amazon is is, uh, is indeed uh, important. It's it's often a numbers game. You just got to find the yes man on the other side. Um, but but just to add a little bit, because channel control is a whole a whole thing, and and we we can get into it off off this. But really, um, what I would say is. Um, uh, being proactive and preventative is is the first step. Um, so making sure that you have your unauthorized seller agreements, you have your map policies in place, you have them published on your website, um, you have them distributed to your buyers or distributed to your buyers via your distributors, however you're set up. Just making sure that as many of your your purchasers that you have a, a you know control of or at least communication to are getting that resell agreement so they know i'm not allowed to sell on amazon and then that's going to put them on their toes right or it's, and it's going to weed out a lot of those uh, rogue sellers that might have popped up you're still going to be left with some people that get your product other ways and then when that happens brand registry and vendo's six-step channel control strategy um, is going to be what you're going to want to leverage and it, and it gets into all kinds of legal cases and cease and desist and and kind of a whole can of worms there, but um, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Love love the shameless plug, Nick. I love it. Ben, get again in your Vendo strategy to help there. That's awesome. But Stephanie, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, Niso, and yes, we are active. Uh, we do help manage uh, international marketplaces as well. We look forward maybe on a future opportunity with FounderMade to talk through international marketplace management for Amazon. Let's uh, let's come back to advertising for a second here. Geffen, which categories? Uh, do you think have a higher Q1 expectation for advertising performance? Yeah, so that's going to be new year, new you. Um, that's going to be things like supplements, protein, beauty, things that people, um, I mean, and that can go far, right? That can be things like scales. Um, if you have any scales, if you have anything that pertains to wellness and betterment, um, we see huge increases in search volume come January. And what we do see too is sometimes a bit of a delay. So for some of our um, so for some of our diet categories like keto, sometimes we see um, those those trends go into February as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, you are investing right now in placement, you know, advertising on Amazon is not a switch. Uh, it's not in a vacuum where you can turn it on kind of like Facebook or Google and you'll automatically begin seeing results. Um, time and investment do play into uh into the hands there as well as ranking so making sure that you know all the things that we're talking about right now are being put into effect before your peak time you know that could be q1 for a lot of your betterness brands that could be prime month that could be you know if you're an outdoor sportswear or leisure company that could be uh spring into summer um making sure that your ads are well placed and well ranked within the advertising algorithm before these events happen. Because if you start advertising on January 1st, you're already behind the curve of all the other sellers that we're advertising on uh, now, basically. So for a lot of our brands, and, and, and by the way, that's, that can be tough because performance in those spaces is not good, you know, in pre peak season. So if you look at the, for instance, the grocery space, which sees huge increases in January and things like protein drinks, uh, December, November and December are actually the slowest months in the category. Um, and what that means is that your performance on ads will go down. So you're going to see lower returns, you're going to see worse conversion rates, and you'll most likely see higher cost per clicks for some of the reasons that we talked about earlier. But if you can pursue through that, and obviously if you can afford to uh, kind of make it through that, your your placement will be better moving into that peak time and you will just be you will perform better across the board and the gains will most likely with the right strategy be outsized relative to the two to four week investment you place before peak time um, so those are some of the categories that we expect for q1 and and 
most sellers and, and most of the big players in the space are already beginning to advertise to set themselves up for success in January and February. Yeah, that's Super helpful. Point. Thanks. Go ahead, Vinny. Yeah, I was going to add, um, just having a small spend ahead of Q1 allows you to sustain in category, right? And that's really important uh, to Geffen's point. Uh, because once the algorith algorithm sees a drop within your ranking, it's really, you know, it's an, a new investment that you're going to have to reconsider so that you can, get, you know, get back up the ranks. That's why I obsess over ranking because I don't want to lose traction <laughs> of where we are. And we have, you know, and the, the biggest thing is that when you're in number one category, the, the, play, the strategy there, the playbook changes around completely because now it's sustainability and competition coming to the market. Right. So your perspective... Um, in terms of how to manage that 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 top rank just changes, and um, um, you know we're very happy that um, we can support both because we do have we do have a lot of brands that are one in category, and the volume that they get, especially for certain times like Q1, is phenomenal, and it just helps with sustaining that number one spot. Yeah, and, and that's why, as Vinny mentioned, ha having a small spend, and just in general, whether it has to do with inventory or sales velocity. Having a small momentum versus no momentum can make a big difference. Um, and that's why we always look for an always on strategy when it comes to ads. So making sure that our ads run throughout the day, even if that requires lowering your bids and not showing up top of page. Um, if it's before peak time, making sure that you're showing up for as much the day as possible. Um, obviously, uh, Amazon's algorithm is a black box. We don't know what they're ranking day in and day out. But based on our large sample sizes, we've seen very strong successes in maintaining low momentum versus no momentum. It's so funny how well connected we all are. I was literally about to just ask you about the always on strategy, Perfect. day parting versus bidding. Like I know you and I talk about all the time. Yeah. Is day parting a better strategy? Is it? But I, I think we found the most success with the always on strategy to your point there. Yeah, so the always on strategy is crucial, right? Because A, I do recommend um, Amazon does provide order times. Um, and if you guys don't use a third party software that can tell you when your uh, orders are, you can see them in the platform or you can download them and see which hours of the day uh, people are buying uh, your products. Um, and that can help with day parting if budgets are really tight. But what we do find is that, and we have had Amazon reps confirm this, pausing ads as of right now um, hurts more than it helps uh, because there are delays in the way Amazon likes to ramp up their ads. Um, and, and when you pause, if it's for six or eight hours a day and turn back on, it's very possible that you're going to lose out on peak time um, and you're going to actually get in there 30 minutes or an hour later. So making sure that you're on and that you have the budgets and obviously that you're uh, adjusting your bids there uh, is, is crucial. And uh, Amazon did release day parting in their API, um, which was a which was a pretty big update uh, a few months ago. That tells us that at some point it might come into the seller facing platform, and so when it does, we can expect that Amazon will probably have um, developed their algorithm a little bit more that will allow you know day parting to be a bit more of a realistic option. Until then, the manual turning off and turning on. Um, We've seen always on work better, and we have a lot of brands uh, that have seen such success with it that they have increased their budgets and increased their bids to ensure um, that they are uh, investing properly in that strategy. Awesome. Thanks, Geffen. Brand presence and, and building your brand on Amazon, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, there are several marketing tools on Amazon that I'm shocked still to this day people don't know or are aware of if they're on the platform already. Nick, can you give um, kind of a breakdown for our audience here about best in class, maximum brand presence and building on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, earlier we talked about some off Amazon ways to, to you know, capture the customer and their and, and that relationship. But um, let's talk about some of Amazon's features. Um, I, I alluded to the new beta uh, manage your customer engagement um, or manage your customer experience as some people call it. And basically it's a native email automation uh, dashboard that Amazon rolled out a few months ago that allows you to um, announce any new products that have been launched in the last six months. So you can send an email announcing that product, um, driving traffic to it. Um, you can even upload a, a custom creative uh, graphic 
to, to kind of highlight that product, maybe an infographic of some sort, whatever's going to really resonate with that, with that um, consumer. Um, and this is all Amazon approved. Um, as part of that program, they also have the event-based email uh, marketing templates that I mentioned earlier. Um, we saw them for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and we see them now for, for the holidays. Um, but they are uh, controlled by Amazon. So it's not like you can just go in there and say, hey, I'm having a, uh, you know, a Super Bowl sale. Uh, I want to send this email through Amazon to my Amazon followers about the Super Bowl sale. It's not there yet anyway, but it's very um, young uh, of a program. So um, very excited to see how that program um, gets um, expanded. And, you know, just to, to make sure I'm super clear, you can't use that program to just send emails to all of your pre-existing Amazon customers. Um, that would be great. But um, what you can use it for is to send it to your followers. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what followers are on Amazon, um, I, you know, I'm not surprised because it's, it's not a huge part of Amazon just yet, but we can see that Amazon is going in that way. Um, there's a few ways you can drive followers. One is through the brand store. There's a follow button on that brand store. So what we've done now is a best practice here at Vendo is we're putting a, a banner at the top of the brand store that says, follow us for, you know, updates, you know, um, you know, whatever you want to say within Amazon's terms of service, but we have some compelling call to action to get them to click that follow button. Um, another way that we can drive followers is through Amazon posts. Um, and this is another example of uh, maximizing brand presence um, and building your brand on Amazon. Amazon posts, for those of you who don't know, is a mobile only for the most part, you do see it on the brand store on desktop, but mobile only for the most part, um, shoppable, uh, social media type uh, feature. Think of like shoppable Instagram on Amazon, but instead of um, like customers posting to their feed, the brands post to their feed. And so if you go onto mobile and you look at a product page right below, um, right by the Q&A in the review section is going to be this related post section. And even if you're not using post, if your customers are using it, which I would bet 99% likely that they are, um, at least one of your competitors, their posts are going to show up on your product page, right? And so what's really cool about posts is you can basically think of it like you think of Instagram um, or your social media. You post lifestyle content, you put a caption behind it, you know, you test different things, flat lays, models, product imagery, lifestyle imagery, whatever. You start testing, you see the impressions, you see how many people actually clicked that post, engaged with it. And then you can also see how many people saw that post, clicked that post, and then click the product and shop the product because you can actually attach 10 different ASINs to that post. And so we've developed a reporting um, model where we can actually estimate how many sales have been driven from this Amazon post program. And to top it all off, it's a free program. You know, all you need is the resources to upload your content, post it to your up to 10 ASINs, and it goes out there and it drives traffic to your page, free traffic, and, and you can estimate sales. Um, another cool part of it, is Amazon will actually have your posts show up, like I said earlier, on competitors' product pages. Now, it's not like product targeting advertising where you can say, all right, I want to target these competitors' pages and have my posts show up there um, because there's no bidding. There's no budget, right? It's just free. So Amazon actually will show your post on competitors, complementary products, supplementary products, and you can really hit it big. If, you, if Amazon shows your post on a competitor that gets 100,000 views a month, well, the amount of people that engage and shop your product from that post is going to be much higher, right? And so um, one of the case studies that we did recently um, for one of our brands, it's on our website, on our case study section, it shows how we were able to drive $12,000 in estimated sales uh, within a 60-day period just through post. And for that brand, this is a, a smaller brand than, than some of the ones we work with, but that for that brand, that was actually a pretty big chunk of, of their sales. Um, and so... You know, post is, is not to be overlooked. And going back to what I was saying earlier about driving followers, post is one of the ways that you can drive followers because if people want to follow your brand after seeing your post, they click follow. The last way that you can um, really convey your brand image um, and drive followers on Amazon right now is through Amazon Live, um, live stream. Now, in order to drive those followers, you have to be the one hosting the Amazon Live. So there, there's a little bit of that disconnect there. 
Um, but if you don't want to host the Amazon Live, we have a, a tactic that we're really leaning into more heavily in 2022, and that is getting products featured on Amazon Live streams. Um, so, you know, I don't, if you don't know about Amazon Live, check it out. Um, it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's like QVC, HSN meets Amazon. Um, and rather than, you know, setting up a studio, getting, you know, or, or just recording yourself, you can just reach out to these uh, Amazon live streamer influencers and, and pay them a small fee to feature your product, drive traffic, drive brand awareness, drive sales, um, and, and drive that, that brand building um, goal that we're, we're talking about. Um, so yeah, that, that's the three ways that you can drive followers. That's three very specific ways on how to um, exhibit your brand in, in a much more powerful way. And again, the more followers, the more remarketing power you have because that manager customer engagement data is only able to be sent to followers. So it's not gonna be worth much if you don't have any followers. Um, the last thing that I'll say on that is um, another way to drive followers followers on your brand store is if you have an insert card, you can put a QR code on that insert card. You can say scan to follow us. They scan that code. It brings up the brand store. You've got that banner in there that says, you know, arrow up follow, and then you can drive followers that way too. So just some creative ways to build up your followers, build up your remarketing power, all Amazon approved programs and features. A lot of great tips there, Nick. Thank you for that. We had another quick question here. Um, this was from Hafsa, and I apologize if I said the name incorrectly. So sorry, Hafsa, if I butchered your name. But uh, the gist of her question essentially is internally, they had a meeting and they're still not sure whether um, they should be on Amazon or not as a cosmetics company. And they were asking, uh, excuse me, she was asking, should uh, they focus on being on Amazon versus their own D2C? And I think we covered a little bit of this earlier where uh, depending on the size of your company and how much you're spending off of Amazon to grow your brand, you are most likely on the platform, whether you like it or not, at least in a search or possibly a rogue selling scenario. Uh, so, you know, one of the answers there is just to check that, audit that, investigate that first. And then secondly, see, hey, if you're stunting your growth on your own D2C side, if it's not converting, if things aren't working, Amazon is a great A-B test channel to go off of to start launching your brand presence. But I'll open it up to Nick, Geffen and Vinny for additional insights or opinions there. Specific for cosmetics and beauty, I believe the question was for. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I you know, my, what comes to mind right away is, um, you know, the different features that Amazon uh, provides um, for that category. And um, uh, the luxury beauty category is, is a, a more premium category to be in. So I would look into the luxury beauty, beauty category um, because with that category, you get um, access to a lot more features. You get access to marketing features, marketing placements, you know, uh, event-based placements. Um, you typically get a, a, an account manager assigned um, and that will just help you um, fast track your growth on Amazon uh, being in that category and, and, and open up a lot more uh, doors for your brand. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Nick. Go ahead, Benny. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say is try to leverage some software tools so that you can understand traffic from a branded perspective coming onto Amazon. Um, by just typing your brand name on the search engine, you'll be able to see what search results come. But the tools uh, will allow you to further expand on that. So it's going to allow you from a branded perspective, understand the current traffic going on to Amazon. So you get a projected uh, sort of like window. If that uh, branded search term does have a lot of volume, and if it does, I would say definitely, you know, maximize that traffic. Um, and by going onto Amazon, start selling your products. If not, if, if you see that from a branded perspective, you have very little traffic, then that's a different conversation. Um, but, you know, that would be a good start point. Yeah, and I think- Yeah, and just, just to add to that, oh, sorry, Darren. No, go ahead, go ahead, Nick, you're good. Yeah, I was just gonna, I, I was just gonna add to that. Um, you know, I think it also depends on your brand, right? Um, you know, and the resources you have. If you have a huge marketing and advertising budget, D2C may, maybe might be the priority, right? But it takes a lot more money typically to, to grow your brand D2C, right? Because you have to generate all that traffic. Whereas with Amazon, you have access to all of this traffic already. And um, almost always your conversion rate is gonna be much, much higher. I think on D2C, the conversion rate, if you're lucky is like 2% more typically is like 1%. On Amazon, the average is nearly 10%. And with a lot of the brands we work with, 
we see conversion rates even over 50%. So it's really about assessing your brand as, as it stands, the resources, the budgets, the, the, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, specifics of it, um, and then really testing, okay, to Vinny's point, is there a search volume for my brand? Well, I don't want to lose that search, that searcher to another brand, right? Because Amazon shoppers are, are typically Amazon shoppers, unless they're really, really um, loyal to your brand or adamant about buying from your brand, they're just going to start looking for other products from other brands on Amazon. So if they're searching for you, can't find you, that's an issue, right? Yeah. And then uh, we, Nick talked about this earlier, but we are very much an omni company. And we believe uh, in the fact that you're gonna, if you're gonna have a retail strategy, you need to be buttoned up online as a result of that. So to further answer your question, if uh, in the cosmetic space, let's say you have a strategy to go offline eventually to Ulta, Sephora, Nordstrom, or any other beauty uh, retail outlet, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're buttoned up on Amazon and that no one is unauthorized selling your products so that the buyers aren't asking you why is, why am I not getting the lowest price? Why you have pricing different MSRP on Amazon? So it's important if you're going to start developing an offline retail strategy and you've moved away from D to C or expanding from D to C, you have to understand that Amazon is going to be a part of those buyer conversations when you go to retail. So very important as another uh, helpful tip, hopefully, of information. Vinny, uh, we've set up our items correctly. We've optimized them and we've forecasted them for success. What should we be focused on next? So next is, you know, Jan 1st for Q1. That's really where traffic starts to spike. Um, start to, at this point, your listings are fully optimized. You're confident, you have a set budget, confident that you can start advertising. So start launch, launching those campaigns and, and really look at what marketing initiatives are going to drive that growth that you're expecting. Um, I think um, having those queued up, ready to go um, are really important. Now, let's say you are look, you're definitely looking for incremental ways of increasing revenue. You've already hit the baseline. You're doing everything right. Um, you want to be more a little bit more advanced. Um, there's different other ways to target via advertising that I'm sure Geffen can get into so that you can get more, more of that uh, expert view. Uh, but from uh, another starting ground, I would say look at other, um, obviously protect your heroes, right? Your heroes are always going to be performing just fine. Those guys are going to drive revenue top line, and they and, and you know you can account for that revenue already top line. But then, what usually happens is you have your middle tier and your lower tier items that are uh, perhaps perhaps just shine away from from becoming your strikers, right? Those items that are really going to start generating that incremental revenue you're looking for. So I think really giving that perspective and really giving a push to the rest of your catalog, A B test. Um, leverage Amazon's tools, um, develop that brand ethos that Nicholas was talking about earlier for those items as well. Um, I can guarantee you, you'll see some wins there. That's awesome. Thanks, Vinny. I, I did skip over one question that was relevant to the previous topic Nick was covering. So apologize, Carla, I believe, asked, uh, can you please repeat the first method to increase followers? Is that through a native email feature on Amazon? Yeah, so it's, it's, it is a native email feature. Uh, it's a beta that was rolled out a few uh, months ago. Um, I believe it's available to, to all accounts. Um, it might be in, in private beta still, but um, most of the accounts um, we've, we've seen, actually, yeah, some of the accounts don't have access to it, but you can check, just go into your settings um, and user permissions. And if you're not the primary account holder, um, you're not gonna see it. So you have to go and change the user permissions to make that customer, um, uh, a manager customer uh, engagement uh, feature visible uh, under your login. And then, yeah, once you go in there, you'll, you'll see um, how you can set it up, the templates where you can upload images, the products that you can choose, all that fun stuff. Awesome, thanks. Thanks for answering that, Nick. I know we're running a little bit short on time. We're coming close to the end here, but I wanna run through a few more points. We got some more great content to give off here. Geffen, real quick, if you wanna to talk to our audience about what should total ACoS be if a brand is looking to grow, and by the way, probably educate our audience on what ACoS means in case people aren't aware. And does that increase during peak times? You know, What percentage of their total revenue should be driven by ads? 
You're on mute. You're on mute. Whoops, on was mute. on mute there. there. Uh, absolutely. Um, that's a that's one of the most crucial questions, right? And 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 it'll tie into one more thing. I'll try not to take up too much time because we could we could spend a full hour just on this. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but for those that don't know, so a cost is your advertising cost of sale, and what that is is spend over ad revenue. What we look at at Vendo and what the Amazon space has been moving towards for quite some time is looking at what's called total a cost, which is uh, what percentage of your total business on Amazon is going towards ads. So if you spend 20 bucks and you drive $100 of total revenue uh, across all of your channels paid and uh, organic, um, that will be a 20% total A cost. Now, it varies per brand. Um, what we do see benchmarked across both uh, across more mature brands, when you're starting out and you have a net zero on Amazon, it will always be high. Launch will always require usually anywhere between 60 to 80% of your total revenue coming from ads. And usually what that translates to is between a 40 to 60% total A cost. If you're launching net new on Amazon and you don't have a huge following that's coming from off of Amazon onto the platform, that's that upfront investment that you make in acquiring customers, acquiring reviews. And obviously um, Nick has a ton of tools up his sleeve that you know he can use to kind of jumpstart reviews. But in general, that's really a launch strategy. If you're more mature, if you've been selling, we we like to bring that down. Um, a general benchmark is anywhere between 10 to 15% is on the conservative side. So that is dominating your branded space, going making light inroads and light investments into non-branded, and then not really investing in any really aggressive ranking strategies. When you look at 15 to 25%, that's more of your steady growth. Uh, kind of range there. That's where you're looking at, you know, you've got so you, you're uh, leveraging a good amount of the campaign types, campaign strategies, you're making strong forays into non branded, and you're also looking towards reviews and towards customer acquisition. And then really above 25 to 30% is where you're really putting the pedal to the metal. That's where you know, looking at general uh, profitability margins on Amazon, you're beginning to operate in the red, but you're looking to spend to acquire. And that leads us to one of the most important KPIs that we've started looking at, um, which is cost per customer acquisition. And so when you're looking at, you know, total a cost, that's your profitability metric. And that's your profitability metric in a certain time frame. When you start looking at customer acquisition, you start broadening that time frame and you start saying, Hey, what does it cost to acquire this customer? And then in six months, 12 months, 18 months, what did that customer bring back to us? Basically, what is the customer lifetime value in a, in a 12 to 24 month period? And you can start pegging your total ACOS against your cost per customer acquisition and customer lifetime value and seeing if the long-term benefits of making that investment and acquiring that customer outweigh the potential short-term negatives profit-wise of having a higher total ACOS. Um, and so we've been look, we've, we've, we've seen really strong success for a lot of our clients with the, with that type of approach, because it's allowed them to acquire literally thousands of new customers and to see that return come in, you know, six, eight, 12 months. Um, but in general, as a rule of thumb, if you're looking at margins on a, on a, on a short scale, it's, it's really 10, 10 to 15 low 15, 25, medium 25, 30 plus is high. Thanks, Kevin. Detailed and concise as always. Appreciate no that. Uh, as everyone can tell, we've got a wealth of information to share amongst our team. Uh, the beauty of this is, as I mentioned earlier, Vendo is filled with a team of superstars uh, that please, if you want to reach out and you want to ask questions or find more information, we're always around to do so. I don't think it looks like, Megan, we're going to have time for the last part here uh, of marketing initiatives. Is that correct? I mean, we are about two minutes out. Um, I'm going to leave this screen here. If you guys maybe each want to share like one quick tip um, for marketing initiatives in the last two minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to leave this slide up so everyone in the audience knows how to get in contact with you. Um, if you have more questions, they are here. Um, as Darren mentioned, wealth of knowledge, all of you. Um, but go for top top marketing initiative tips. Nick, go for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, top, top tips, own, owning, owning your customer. I mean, you know, we, we, we dug into it, but pre-purchase, post-purchase, anything, everything you can do, uh, you know, maximize that opportunity to, to own the customer relationship and capture that data point. Um, again, it's gonna give you a big, uh, big uh, lead, lead ahead of the competition. Yeah, and real quick, um, if you wanna know more, 
we were about to cover uh, several other initiatives from PR to Google ads to aggressive cross-selling. Uh, we had a lot more content as well, so please feel free to reach out. Vinny, looks like you're about to chime in with a quick tip there. Yeah, quick tip, develop your own flywheel, prep, plan, execute, optimize. And I was gonna say, everyone pay attention, optimize your titles, very key from an SEO perspective, and make sure your images are right up to speed. 80% of Amazon shoppers are eating with their eyes, so pay attention to your titles and your imagery, always. Yep, and on the title point, uh, ads are a really good tool to, uh, to inform you of what should be in your titles. Uh, what's converting, what's getting a lot of clicks. If, if, uh, if uh, you're seeing keywords that you're bidding on or that Amazon's providing you that work, uh, try those out in your titles. You'd be surprised. We've made very small title changes that have uh, yielded huge benefits for some of our clients. Awesome. Incredible. Thank you guys so much for sharing all your tips. Audience, amazing questions. I'm super happy to be able to give you all the um, opportunity to learn from these superstars. And we can't wait to see you all soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for having us.